throw Triple H, Stephanie, and Nick Connor on the board. Mm. So they they had to be part of that unanimous vote. So Chris, you got one of two things here: either this was a Stephanie Con Triple H power play, or bro, they were on the inside working for Vince. <laughs> Triple H talks about with the first interview back, literally being on his deathbed, Chris. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, bro. So while your son-in-law is on his deathbed, Vince McMahon takes over NXT, fires everybody Triple H hired, and regardless does a whitewash of everything... Bro, you do that while your son-in-law is on his death. Bro, to me, that was the punishment. Mm. Now, you remember, Chris, shortly thereafter, what did Stephanie do? Personal issues. I'm, ta- I'm going to take some time off yeah. to be with my family. So all of that happened before the Vince shenanigans. Yeah. So th- th- there's a lot there, bro. You d- Listen, EC3 said it. Vince is freaking ruthless, bro. You can't think like Vince. But Chris, if your son-in-law is on the verge of death and you're firing the road dog, bro, either, either that is payback or literally Vince McMahon is sick in his head. Fired Road Dog, fired Regal, yes. fired a slew of NXT yes. people. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, that to it, me, that was the punishment. Mm-hmm. That was the punishment. If that's the case, context, because who knows how this will be spread as we discuss it. If that is the case, like, it's so ironic that nobody in the industry is above. Vince McMahon getting his way at the end and destroying you yes. <laughs> completely unnecessarily, like in the most sadistic and evil way possible. Like, you know, you're a low card talent, you know, they bury you on the way out. So your value lessens, you know, you're a low card talent, like some sort of like deals come up where they have the likeness used and they, you know, ruthlessly attack some small little indie promotion or a company mm-hmm. ceases and desist just using the law to their favor just attacking things that don't matter they have no bearing on the company but just because they can i mean that's genghis khan now now, chris here's something very interesting too so the the stuff goes down with vince vince goes home stephanie's back she's the care perko all right bro towards the end of december the beginning of january there's an exchange of emails between vince and the board and Vince is making his intentions clear to the board. I want to come back. Um, I am not going to approve any sale, any licensing rights or anything, unless I am the chairman of the company. Now, wow. there, there was one email, Chris. L- listen to how interesting they, th- this is. And I could read it for you verbatim. I literally could pull it up, but I'm just going to tell you the short story. The, um, the board writes him back. And the board basically says, Vince, and here's the key word, Vince. Vince, it is unanimous that while you are being, um, you know, while you are being looked at by the SEC and while you're, you know, the the attorney general's office, um, we do not think it is a good idea that you come back to this company, especially as far as the, the shareholders are concerned. Bro, they said the vote was unanimous. Bro, Triple H, Stephanie, and Nick Connor on the board. Mm. So they they had to be part of that unanimous vote. So, Chris, you got one of two things here. Either this was a Stephanie Con Triple H power play, or bro, they were on the inside working for Vince. Like they went along with the board and the unanimous decision, knowing Vince held all the cards and knowing Vince was going to come back, whether it was unanimous or not, he had the power. 
-hmm. So, it, you know, the fact that it was unanimous, that's the key word, bro, because either we, we voted against the father and the, and the father-in-law or we were in Vince's camp from day one. So, so along those lines, Vince, why do you think that, you know, there's a lawsuit out now, allegedly, of basically him abusing his voting rights? It's not allegedly. There, There is a lawsuit. What they, They've started, the, the shareholders have started a class action. Right, yeah. I know that there's a class action, but the, the allegations is that he's voting his, you know, he's abusing his voting rights. So it's alleged right. until, you know, he's, right. convic he's, he's convicted to, of it. So why do you, why do you think that he is you know, basically being sued for that. What, what, what are your thoughts on that that class action being uh, um, in action? Bro, in, in I, th I think they're 100%, th there is 100% a case. Mm -hmm. You are firing people obviously who are against you and you are replacing them with people who are for you so you can get back in the saddle once again. I mean, I, I think 1000% that is that that is legit and especially like it, it came from the, from delaware bro mm -hmm. so it really depends on the state that you're in but supposedly allegedly in delaware that is 1000 percent illegal mm. ec3 your thoughts on these uh these allegations of vince mcmahon strutting his stuff and using his voting power in the board to fire and hire and veto and everything else in between I, I'm just like, I mean, guys, if it comes from Delaware, this is on. The only thing I can think of is like picturing this scene. I see a, like a, a leather chair and an office and like a raging fire. And I see this big hand grabbing like a sword like, you know, letter opener and like slicing this letter open it and popping it. And you kind of could just hear some mumbling under it, mumbling under it. But then you hear the word unanimous unanimous is real big and it's like panned in on unanimous and it pans out and it's it's Vince and then he turns around and he looks at the fire and he's looking at this letter he like 20 minutes go by of him just staring at the word unanimous they unanimously want me gone they unanimously want me to leave yeah and then this crumple of the paper this toss into the fire kind of goes real big and you see it's like full face and he goes <laughs> then i can just imagine the bloodletting that's going to take place when he does come back and just heads are going to roll it's going to be absolutely just a, a, a murder scene of people losing their jobs losing their livelihood all because you know it's a high level player said unanimously we don't want you there we get legally with delaware and the, the voting rights. I mean, this man has been above the law since Moses. Yeah, the, ster the steroid trial, bro. He beat the yeah. U.S. government. Yeah, He's, like, and then I think everything to him is like the next great challenge and the next great fight. Yeah. So. You know, he's using these voting rights, but they're like, sir, that's illegal. You can't do it. I can do what I want. No. This is all mine. And that like, I mean, when we talk about people with the lives in the industry the whole time and they can't discern reality from you know fiction and entertainment he's been on top of the lies forever where he can do whatever he wants and he does get away with it because because it's wrestling man you know, Chris, Chris, we, need your, we need your x files uh soundbite with that <laughs> i just want to say the very interesting this what ec3 said think think about this for a second bro because th this is almost logical the unanimous say they did vote against him coming back right. triple h and stephanie and con are a part of that yeah. bro if that's the case vince's bro at that point to me vince is like bro you will be running this company over my dead body mm. i i will sell this company before you two take control of it if, if that's the case so yeah. we, we don't know but bro that that bro if they truly voted against vince sure. forget sure. It, it's get it's lights out bro i mean when you you've done everything you've ever wanted to do you've competed on the highest level you've conquered your your genre you've conquered so many things so many 
secretaries, you've conquered it all. And then if you have nothing to lose at the tail end of your life, like your last act will be vengeance against anybody who's ever unanimously voted against me. I will have the last whatever it may be, and it will be my last breath. This guy's incredible. Like, th th we can't contemplate anybody, anybody listening, anybody watching, anybody on the board, anybody even with a Stephanie and Triple H can't contemplate the mindset this man has because it's, it's one in a billion and mm -hmm. kudos, respect to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vince, kudos. do you uh, agree with uh, EC3's take on Vince McMahon as far yeah, as being let, such a let, mastermind let, genius? Let's be honest, Chris. Let's be honest, EC3. Okay, bro, it's almost like I'm going down in a blaze of glory, man. Yeah, bro, guess what? You're going down in a blaze of glory, and you're going down alone. Yeah. Th think, think about that. I, bro, all the money he has, the billions of dollars. Chris, what does it mean? This is a 77-year-old man. I should be sitting at home embracing my grandchildren, Grandpa Vince, Grandpa Vince. Bro, how many years do you have left? You want to go out in this blazing, you know, ball of fire alone? Yeah. Is it's, that what you want, bro? It's just something we can't understand. We can't. We can't, bro. I hope we have a psychiatrist here that can maybe break down. Yeah, get, go ahead, Chris, please. Yeah, I was He's going to he's going to destroy the very thing he built. I was just going to say just, you know, that's where recency bias comes in and a lot of people deal with recency bias is very common uh as far as what is the last impression that someone Wait, what, 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 what is that what you just said, Chris? What's so that? So recency mean? recency bias is basically a, a psychological phenomenon when people usually uh think of something based on the latest thing that they saw or latest version of something that they saw of a person a thing um say say for instance if um you know if, if someone's in a, a business relationship and things were going well for 10 years and it wasn't going too well for two months they would look at that person as not a good business person because of the most recent thing that's happened basically it's the opposite uh, it's the opposite of primacy bias primacy bias is basically uh the psychological phenomenon of thinking uh, being anchored to, to to the your first impressions on something and that carries on to how you think about somebody or something recency uh, bias is the most yeah. recent or current thing about someone that affects your judgment toward them there, so, there is oh go ahead no, no, go ahead, EC3, you're good. I was just going to say real fast, there is a saying within wrestling that you're only as good as your last match. Mm -hmm. Whatever you've done beforehand, doesn't matter. Whatever you're going to do next, who's to say? Your last match, it's only as good as you are. And, that, and that's a form of recency bias. <laughs> so, yeah.